All right, what's going on crew? How are we all doing today? I am going to film the first of the eight workouts from the Working Out at Home workshop, uh, the pack of which can be found in the file section of our private Facebook group. So this first workout is going to be a full body strength workout and just a quick disclaimer about it. I was kind of waffling between wanting to do either a follow along workout or a video that was purely instructional and for this particular one I am going to do a instructional video simply because I do not expect everyone to have the same workout equipment. Some people are going to need to work in a, a greater rep range so doing more reps because they have lighter weights. Some people might not have any weights at all so they might have to use other forms of resistance which is absolutely fine. Some people might have to take something at a different tempo to make that exercise feel a little bit more challenging because again, they only have lighter weights. So we're not going to do a follow along for this particular one, but stay tuned because some of the others will absolutely be follow along style workouts where you're doing the workout in time with me. So uh, as for now, we're going to do a full body strength workout. Uh, so that means we're going to be working our lower body, upper body, a uh, couple of isolation movements for, in this case, our shoulders. I will be showing options for those of you who do not have traditional strength equipment. Again, that is perfectly fine. No worries if you don't have a set of dumbbells or resistance bands. Um, we can still do this workout anyway. We can still get a solid strength training workout in. So I just wanna take you on a quick tour of what I have. So I have right here, what most people tend not to need, a squat rack, sweater, bench. I'm in my basement, it's a little bit cold down here, so I might be putting that back on. Uh, this is something that I use personally because I do lift heavy. Um, and this is something I actually wanted to invest in in a while and it's worth it for me. Um, not gonna be the case for everybody. Having just some sets of weights, resistance bands, perfectly fine. I do have those as well. Take it right over here. Bands, heavier band, which I was clearly already using this morning, didn't put away. Very unlike me. I have right down here dumbbells. I have over here my mat with another set of dumbbells that I'll probably be demoing with in a little bit. I have plates for my barbell. I have a standard bar courtesy, where are we? Of Heather, somewhere over here, there we are. Thank you so much for that. Um, as well as some stuff for my own personal workouts. Uh, attachments for my barbell to make it do something called like a landmine attachment, where it's gonna work similar to a T-bar row. If you ever wanna see one of my workouts, let me know down in the comment box below. Um, and I'm more than happy to try to film what I do. Uh, which is kind of what we do, just a lot more of it. Uh, but as for now, we are going to do workout number one, full body focus number one. Got plan right here. Um, I'm also going to be putting this down in the comment or the description box below. So our first movement here today is going to be a goblet squat. So what makes a goblet squat is the way that you're holding your dumbbell. So instead of holding weights down at your side, you're going to be holding the weight at your chest. So it's going to be a front loaded squat. This is going to make you keep your upper body a little bit more upright. Going to be quite quad focused. Um, feet are going to be right underneath the hips. It's going to force you to brace your core um, a little bit more so than if you're holding those weights to your side. Of course, we always want to brace the core when we're doing our strength based movements, but it's going to be easier to feel it like this. So, demoing. First, body weight. So, if you can all see me, feet are going to be right under the hips, toes are flared slightly outwards. We don't want to point straight forward. That tends to be a slightly unnatural direction for people's knees to track. Slight toe flare about uh, 5 to 15 degrees to the side. Perfect. So what you're going to do is sink down, bending the knee, uh, hips, knees, and ankles all at the same time. Lowering right down you're, like you're going to sink down onto a chair. Then pushing the floor away from you with your feet. Squatting now. 
coming up. So this is just your basic body weight squat. And if you don't have any weights, it's a perfectly good option. If you have weights, grab one heavier dumbbell. You're gonna hold it by one head. You're not gonna hold it down here. You're not gonna hold it by the handle right here. You're gonna hold it by the head. Touch to the chest. Again, same starting position. Squatting right straight down. Pushing the floor away. Core as nice and tight as you come down. Same as you go. Ways to make this a little bit more challenging. If you only have lighter weights, what you're gonna do, three counts on the way down, three counts on the way up. If you don't have that slightly heavier resistance, you need to do things to make that light weight feel heavier. And a really great way to do that is by slowing down that negative. So three nice slow counts now, one, two, three. On the way down, one, two, three. Even hold at the bottom for another count of three. And then coming up for three, two, one. It's gonna make that lighter weight, even body weight, feel a lot more challenging. It's gonna look a little like this. Grab that weight, hold at the chest. Squatting down for three, two, one. Hold at the bottom. And then coming out for three, two, one. Same thing, squatting down for three, two, one, hold, and up for three, two, and one. So what I have for the rep range for this exercise is two to three sets, 10 to 12 repetitions. If you need to, you can increase that rep range. If you're slowing down that motion, you're not gonna need to, even if you have only body weight. If you have bands, similar. resistance band right here. I'm gonna hook it right underneath my feet. I'm gonna hold it together in front. It's gonna be pretty easy coming down. And that resistance is gonna be applied when I'm coming right back up, pressing up against that resistance. Again, keeping those feet planted on the floor, not lifting up heels or toes, sinking down onto a chair, that type of visual and using that band for resistance instead. Another perfectly good option. Uh, the way that we are doing this is a straight set. So you do your 10 to 12 squats, rest, 10 to 12, 10 to 12 squats, rest, maybe one more set of that, and then you move on to the next exercise. So what we have next is a single arm dumbbell row. This is going to allow you to not be in that 45 degree bent over position that you might otherwise be in for a standard dumbbell row. You are going to be a bit more horizontal, so it's going to take all the pressure off that low back. So that's going to be a huge relief to most people. Um, it's going to allow you to, if you have a little bit more weight, to lift a little bit more weight. Um, but it's a great unilateral exercise, so if you do feel stronger or weaker on one side than the other, this is going to be a great way to kind of even out those imbalances again in time. Um, so I'm gonna be doing mine right back here on my flat bench. If you have a sofa, if you have a couch, if you have a chair, uh, feel free to do it there. If you have a table to do it against, something that's not gonna move as a nice table service to prop yourself up against. So it's gonna look a little bit like this. Sorry, I'm kinda covered in dust. You're gonna take your one heavier weight. Again, I'm gonna be right here. If you're against a table, you can kind of prop yourself up like so, just having your hand up on the arm of the chair or the back of the couch or whatever. Stagger your stance. You have a nice, wide, solid base of support. And to a dumbbell, one heavier dumbbell, you're gonna hold it in your working side. Hips and shoulders stay square. You're gonna roll up. Bring the elbow in past the ribs, squeezing the lat muscles, and then lowering that arm right straight back down. Again, pulling up, leading with the elbow, and extending right straight back down. What you're not doing 
is just kind of bring the elbow up into the armpit, rolling that shoulder forward, shoulder comes up and back with the elbow opening up that chest. And then you have to repeat on the other side, 10 to 12 reps. But let's say you don't have a dumbbell. Maybe you have one of these. A gallon of water is about eight pounds. Can absolutely very easily be used as a form of resistance. If you don't have one of these, probably got something like this hanging around. Load up the backpack with as much weight as you possibly need. This can absolutely be used as a viable form of resistance. Any weight is weight that can be used to strength train with. So, this can be used in a bent over row or as a single arm row. Single arm row will look very similar. I like holding it by these straps just because I'm short and it's gonna hit the floor every time if I hold it by the top handle. So I like to hold it this way, row in, and bring those arms back down, squeeze the top, and back down. As a bent over row, it'll look a little like this. You might need a little bit more weight, but keeping that back nice and flat, shoulders tucked in, opening up that chest as you pull those elbows back, squeezing the top, and lowering back down with control. Again, if you only have lighter weights, slow down those reps. Nice control, maybe three counts up, three counts down. Whatever you need to do to actually feel that motion, you don't just want to quick rep through those 10 to 12 and feel like you can keep doing more. If you don't want to slow down those reps, do more repetitions, do more sets, do something to make that exercise feel challenging. That is the whole point of it. If you don't feel challenged, chances are you're not going to be getting the most out of that exercise. So for chest, what we're going to do is a superset, unlike our first two, which are straight sets. This time we are going to do two exercises back to back. Our dumbbell uh, chest press set together with your dumbbell skull crusher, which is a lying tricep extension. If that does feel bothersome, any sort of tricep exercise will do. Um, if you do not happen to have dumbbells, that is perfectly fine. If you need to do push-ups instead of the dumbbell chest press, perfectly fine. And I will give a body weight option if you do not happen to have any other form of resistance and you just want to use your body weight to do some sort of skull crusher type exercise. So you'll do your 10 to 12 chest presses, 10 to 12 tricep extensions, rest, repeat for two to three total sets. So this is kind of what's going to look like. I am going to use my mat here. You can use a bench like I have if you happen to have one. You can use a stability ball if you happen to have one. I do upstairs somewhere, but it is in desperate need of inflation, so it's not down here. Getting your weights up. You're gonna want a heavier set of weights if you have one. You're gonna prop your weights up on your thighs instead of grabbing the weights from a lying position from either side, which will put your shoulders at risk. You're gonna pop it up. One leg at a time. Your shoulders are stacked right underneath your wrists. Forearms are nice and straight. Wrists are straight. Muscles facing up towards the ceiling. You are gonna lower your elbows down to touch the floor. Here, my elbows are in a 90 degree bend. Wrist, um, wrist still straight, forearms still vertical. And I'm going to press up, squeezing my chest at the top, uh, returning to that starting position. Stretch in the chest as my elbows come down. My elbows are slightly below my shoulders, they're not in line. I'm pressing right straight back up. Doing the 10 to 12 of these. And moving right into your skull crushers. Grab the lightest set of weights if you have one. Pop them up, same way, good practice. This time, wrists, um, still wrists are nice and straight, this time palms face each other. And you are only going to hinge at the elbows. 
You're gonna hinge at the elbows, dropping the dumbbells down so they're right beside the hip. Keeping the elbows tucked in nice and tight. They don't fly all the way out here. Then pressing it right straight back up to that standing position. So like I said, it's just a tricep extension, just lying down on your back. There's gonna be no shoulder movement whatsoever. So don't worry if you have any shoulder issues, shouldn't be a problem. If you only have one weight, you can hold one heavier weight lengthwise or whatever weight you have that is. Lower down, press right straight back up to that starting position. Again, just hinging at that elbow. If you do not have any sort of weights, what you can do is a push up on the floor, on your knees or incline, um, and a body weight tricep extension. I will show you what that looks like. So your push ups and your body weight tricep extensions uh, can be done against an incline, and the tricep extensions have to be done against an incline. Um, don't touch your face like I just did. Um, so push-ups gonna look a little bit like this. I'm gonna show the incline version. If you're doing the same thing on the floor, same mechanics, you're just gonna be a little bit lower down. It's gonna feel a little bit more challenging. So I'm gonna do it against this countertop right here. My body is gonna be in a nice straight line from my, head to my, from my head down to my feet. My hands are just right underneath my shoulders. And what I'm gonna do is lower my chest down between my hands. Again, chest stretches out as I come down and pressing that surface away from me. Elbows are tucked in about a 45 degree angle. I don't have my elbows out too far. That's gonna put a lot of stress on my shoulders and I don't wanna do that. Body weight tricep extension. This time your shoulders aren't gonna be stacked right over top of your wrists. Body's still in a nice straight line, but you're gonna be a little further out. This time you're still gonna only hint at the elbows. Shoulders are gonna stay still. You're gonna bend those elbows so they're in a 90 degree bend. Then press away, straightening back up using those triceps. Even if you don't have, if you do have equipment, try this out because this exercise is pretty legit. Again, the higher up you are, the easier this is going to be. The further down you are, the harder it's gonna be. So again, shoulders stay still, keep those elbows tucked. And that is your body weight tricep extension. So either option is good. If you want to just try out some body weight exercises, see how they go, that's fine. If you need to make either one harder, slow it down. It is going to feel plenty challenging. So our second to last superset is going to be for our shoulders. It's going to be similar to our last one, two exercises back to back. It is going to be an upright row using dumbbells or a band set together with a lateral raise. So if you do have dumbbells, you're going to want a heavier set and a lighter set. Or if you do need to use the same set for both, perfectly fine. If you do have a band, also excellent. So with a set of weights, oh, this might be a little bit for demo. You're gonna hold those weights right in front of you. You're gonna pull up, leading with those elbows, then lowering those arms right straight back down. Pulling up, not shrugging those shoulders up, and bring those arms right back down to that same starting position. You're gonna do uh, 10 to 12 of those, then you're gonna move immediately into your lateral raise. These will require lighter weights, so if you have only light weights, I would suggest using them for both sets. You are gonna bring those arms up to about shoulder height at the highest, then coming right straight back down. Coming up to shoulder height, then back down. What I like to do is turn my pinky out at the top. It's gonna to activate that lateral head of your deltoid, your shoulder muscle, a little bit more than keeping that knuckle facing straight up. Both are fine, but I prefer that little Imagine kind of pouring a jug of water out and pour it down, back in. What you don't want to do is really swing those weights. What you don't want to do is have those hands come above the shoulders. 
that can put you at risk of a little bit of shoulder impingement, which we don't want. Um, if you do not have dumbbells, you can do this with bands. It's gonna look a little like this. You're gonna step on your band with one or two feet. One foot, it's gonna give you a little bit less resistance. Y'all know me, so I like to cross my handles over, pull up, leading with those elbows. Same thing, lower back down with control. Personally, I love upright rows with bands. That's why I think I have that as your main option. And then moving right into your lateral raise. If you do need to, step on a little bit towards the end of that band and do this one arm at a time. Get a little more resistance than that. Again, keep that hand below shoulder height and just do this unilaterally. If you don't have weights, get your backpack out, hold it by the handle, row up and down. Again, load this up with as much or as little weight as you need. And as for your lateral raise, you can do lateral raise with backpack one arm at a time. But another thing that you can use are these guys, soup cans. These are, I think, 10 and 3 quarter um, ounces, less than a pound. What does that mean? Of course, it's not going to be an awful lot of weight, but it is some resistance. Some cans also, by the way, are heavier than this. If you only have light weights, what you can do is come up, pause at the top, come down halfway, all the way up, all the way down, that's one rep, up, halfway, up all the way down, keeping more time under tension, adding in a little pause, adding in a little pulse, is gonna create more time under tension, which is going to make these almost non-existent weights feel challenging. It can even feel challenging body weight this way as you keep that muscle in the contraction for longer. It's gonna make these light weights feel a little bit more intense. So that was just something you can do if you so choose, if you don't happen to have dumbbells or a resistance band, whoever might want it. So that's something you can do, one exercise right after the other, two to three sets of that. And our last exercise is gonna be our hip driven motion, our hip bridge. So the way I have this is a torso elevated hip bridge. What does that mean? If you're on a stability ball, that means your head, your neck, and your shoulders are supported up on the ball, just like we do in our core class. Again, my ball is very much deflated and it's upstairs. So I'm gonna be using my bench. What you can do at home, if you do not happen to have a ball or a bench, do this on a chair, do it on a sofa, that's fine. Anything where your torso is elevated, or if you just want to do this down on the floor and do your basic glute bridge, that is also perfectly fine. So, torso elevated. If you're using a sofa or a chair, your shoulder blades are going to be right on the edge of whatever surface you're using. Chin is slightly tucked, so you're not craning your neck all the way up. But your chin's not also all the way into the chest. Again, imagine there's an apple underneath your chin, you're not trying to crush it. You also don't want to let it go. Again, shoulder blades right in here. Feet, you can't see them, are about hips width apart, flat on the floor, they stay there. And that core is going to stay nice and tight so you don't end up hurting that low back. What you can do is press your hips up so the body is in the tabletop position, even tucking the tailbone under. Again, my body is nice and flat. I have not moved my upper body at all. Then I'm going to lower my hips right straight back down, up squeeze the top and lower right straight back down if you want to use weight you can pop a weight right on the hip bones so you have resistance to push up against and lower back down and you're going to repeat this for 12 to 15 reps if you need to do less that's fine if you need to do more that's fine if you want to add in a longer pause that's great, that's going to create more time on the tension, make those glutes burn, and come right straight back down. So that is your torso elevated hip bridge. 
So I also listed under this particular workout ways that you can make a uh, workout a little bit more different if you want to. If you don't want to do it the way that I have outlined, which is perfectly fine, I actually designed these workouts with the intention for you to do whatever you need to do with these workouts. Modify them, change them up as you like or need. So one of the options is to make this into circuit training. So think um, Monday mornings where we are in the gym, we're going back and forth between strength and cardio. You can absolutely do the same thing at home, even if you don't have a cardio machine. Maybe you do your goblet squats, your two to three sets of 10 to 12, and then you do two minutes, any body weight cardio you want. You can do high knees, you can do butt kicks, you can do jumping jacks. If you have a jump rope, do jump rope. If you just wanna do invisible jump rope, that's awesome, you're not gonna trip. The toe's not gonna, or the rope isn't going to slam on your toes. Um, you can do ball slams if you have them. You can do kettlebell swings if you want them. If you can do runs up and down stairs, you can jog in place, you can do sprints, you can do whatever you wanna do, or if you have a, happen to have a treadmill or a bike at home, hop on that for two minutes, go as hard as you can, and then go on to your next set of strength if you just wanna add a little bit of cardio in there. Something else you can do is do this completely circuit style. You do one set of your squats, one set of your rows, one set of your chest press, one set of your tricep extension, one set of your upright rows, one set of your lateral raises, one set of your hip bridges, then you rest, that's one full round, and you do that all again two to three more times, or maybe even one more time if you wanna just get two rounds in, and do it just as one big circuit. And even though I have a couple supersets in there, you can superset any exercises you want, whatever makes your heart happy. Um, that is just in there as a little bit of an intensity technique. It's gonna keep that heart rate up. You're gonna get a little bit more done in a shorter amount of time, uh, which is something a lot of people like to do, even though we don't have an awful lot to do right now. I mean, we still have families. You probably have, still have things to do. Um, even if we're not necessarily going anywhere. Uh, another thing you can do, especially if you have only light weights or only body weight, is some sort of density set. Getting as many reps in um, as possible in a certain amount of time, an AMRAP, as many reps as possible. Um, again, very helpful, maybe give yourself X amount of time, 30, 40, 45, 50, 60 seconds as many reps in as an, as an exercise, do a little rest, I would say any, anywhere between 15 and 30 seconds, and do it again for two to three rounds. It's going to really fatigue those muscles, which is exactly what we're aiming for. You want those muscles to feel worked at the end of your set, no matter how you're doing it. Again, creating time, more time under tension, slow things down, use whatever weights you have and use them to your best advantage you only have light weights, as I keep mentioning in this workout, slow down those reps if you need to. Perfectly, perfectly fine. If you have those heavier weights, excellent. And if you can do those prescribed reps as is. Cool, do whatever you need to do. Use whatever form of resistance you have on hand. You don't necessarily need weights. You don't necessarily need bands. Any resistance is good resistance. I was hoping to get my cat down here to be resistance for me, but he's just gonna run around the basement and want to escape from me so maybe in an upcoming video we'll have an appearance from the cats um but anyways that is all for today if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comment box below um or on our facebook page feel free to message me if you need to um or if you have any other further questions uh don't forget don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell notification icon so you can be notified whenever one of us posts a new video. Um, but as for now, that's all with me. Peace out, have a good day, stay safe, stay indoors, stop spreading.